Hey Geeseekers, I'm Nick. This is another part to my custom water-cooled editing PC. This is a part that I didn't think I was going to have to make because we've had something happen to the system. And it's kind of one of those annoying, unexpected things. So let's uh, take a look and I'll explain to you guys exactly what happened with this PC. So this PC right here is the PC that I built for my main editing PC. It's custom water cooled. It's pretty overkill. It's really, really cool. But I've since, as you can probably see, like through the TG, uh, I've pulled out a bunch of the hardware because the motherboard decided that it wanted to kick the bucket. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull off this side panel and what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the motherboard because we actually need to get this board RMA. It's really frustrating that this happened and I, I tested a whole bunch of other stuff and it does appear to be just the motherboard and it is already booked in for RMA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out and maybe we'll try and bench test this as well and see if we could get it back to life. But the reality is the board is dead. Now I've already tested with other power supplies, like a whole stack of them. So it's, from what I can tell, it's definitely the motherboard. And before someone comments, oh, maybe it had a leak. There's no leak in the system at all. I've tested it, I've checked it. There is no leaks whatsoever in this system. It's just a case of bad luck. To explain what happened, uh, what I decided to do was the Asus GPU that we air cooled that we had in here to begin with, the 3090 Strix, I decided that I wanted to take that GPU out, put a water block on it for another project and actually put the air cooled 3090 founders in here. So I put the, the air cooled 3090 founders in here, I powered it up and it didn't power up. So I don't quite know why this has happened. And the first instinct I had was like, maybe the power supply died. So I tested a bunch of different power supplies with this and turns out it has nothing to do with the power supply at all. Uh, I haven't had a chance to bench test this yet. So I need to actually test if the CPU is still good. I might be upgrading the CPU as well. So uh, I, I'm in two minds. I can get my hands on a 64 core which is probably, it's just, it's really unnecessary guys. You don't need a 64 core in your workstation. There's just not many applications that really need that many cores. And there's, I can already see the comments, oh, but for this application, yeah, blah, blah. For this application, 32 cores is more than plenty. I'm currently back on my 24 core Threadripper editing PC with the 3960X. And that thing has just been really good good and it's i'm glad that i kept it together as a backup otherwise i would have been up the creek without a paddle knock on wood that my 3960x pc keeps going hard but like the reason why i built this this way and this is a true testament to these type of systems is you're going to see me pull out the motherboard it's still going to be water cooled but i don't have to pull a whole loop apart it's actually kind of a a blessing in disguise because you get to see a true use case for this type of installation and build. So again, big heavy thing. Motherboard needs to come out, but there will also be a final part to this series because I, I just want it to end now. <laughs> I was using this for about two or three weeks with the air cooled GPU and it worked. Oh, it was amazing. Like it was so good. Didn't get hot at all. Thermals are Fantastic, almost small there, but the thermals are very, 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 very impressive on this thing. I really, really like this thing. It's just a shame that this happened, but let's get on with it. I, I need to pull this board out. Uh, I've already booked this in for an RMA with Gigabyte, so they will let me know what actually happened with this. So that would be a nice update, but I suspect that it's basically just going to be a matter of them just sending out a new board or someone, or they'll be like, oh, it's too expensive to fix. So they'll just end up sending a whole new, new board out. But this is very easy. This is a true testament to this type of installation, right? There might be a little bit of dripping, but not enough for a leak. Unplug, look at that. Water cooling fitting, unplugged. Unplugged, no leaks, right? And it's as simple as that. And then I can just 
quite simply unscrew the water block. The other thing is, well, the water block stays filled with coolant. So when I do plug this back in, it's, it's ready to go straight away. So I don't need to re-bleed it or anything like that. It's just going to simply work. There we go. And hey, look at that. Look at that thermal paste coverage, right? Perfect, perfect. That little method that I showed, absolutely perfect. But I did want to give you guys an update and I decided to actually film this part. All of the other testing and stuff that I did when it died, I didn't, I didn't bother with it because it was just in the heat of the moment, frustration wanting to get back up and running. And then luckily enough, we did have a spare system to continue editing on. And that's why I used that storage card as well that you saw in the last part, because all I needed to do was plug that storage card into the new system or the other system in the BIOS, set it to bifurcation mode, and it was up and running instantly. I didn't have to do any weird trickery or any type of whiz bangery in the BIOS. It was just up and running basically instantly. And it's still chugging hard to this day. But we're gonna, only one more screw after this one. There's only seven screws holding in this board because that's how many there are for this board because you can't put a screw in up here and then it's got a center peg. And this is why I wanted to build this system like this because just like that, the motherboard is out and I can do whatever else I need to do. And the first thing I need to do is clean the massive IHS on this. And there's actually one M.2 underneath here that I need to pull out too. So let's clean this up. And yeah, now that the board's out, uh, it doesn't really seem to be anything that would indicate that there's been any issues with this, but I, I do wanna get the CPU out. The other thing that I wanna do as well is I wanna put another motherboard in and test this power supply. Uh, because, <laughs> uh, uh, unbeknownst to me when building the system, and I used this power supply for a long time, there was a Corsair HX series recall the other day, and more specifically, the HX 1200, which is the power supply that I'm using in this system. So I actually don't think it's the power supply, considering I did test a bunch of other power supplies and this board still did not fire up. So yeah, let's, uh, let's, Let's hope that it's just the motherboard and not the CPU. The power supply is a bit of a pain to change out, but we can do that, no problem. All right, time for this CPU to come out, but I do need to know if this chip's dead. I don't think so, because even if the CPU was dead, the board would still spring to life in some way or another, because the Q flash lights on the back usually light up when the board has any type of power, regardless of if there's anything in the socket. So. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say it's not that, but while we've got this up, I'm gonna clean the inside of these. Get so grubby. Ooh, I, I just hate, I hate cleaning these. I hate desocketing them. There's four billion socket pins you can potentially bend. I just don't like doing it when I don't, when, yeah. It's fine, it's fine. Everything is fine. Time to pop that CPU out. Oh, I really, really dislike that. <laughs> really, really dislike that. Just slide it out of the carrier. And we'll put the dummy carrier back in. And then M.2 is out and then you're off to Gigabyte to go get your stuff sorted out, mate. While I'm here, I, I, wanted, I wanna know what's going on with this thing. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the 3970X back in this MSI board that was giving me problems just to see if this system posts because if it posts, then it's definitely not the CPU. So I need to rule this out before I jump to any more conclusions about this. So I like that it's got this protector on the socket, not like the Gigabyte one where it's just got that single carrier. This has got like a double carrier and a socket cover. Okay, let's uh, drop that in. Gently remove that. Put the CPU back down. And we'll, quick, we'll quickly give this one a test. 
see what the story is, see if we can get this one to post. I think the CPU is fine. I think it's literally, literally just that board, which is fine. I mean, I'm saying it's fine, but it's a little bit frustrating because I did put so much work into this water cooled beast that if it doesn't work, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed. I'm going to be honest. With, especially if the CPU is dead, which I don't think it is. It's very rare for a CPU to die, but I have seen CPUs die before, but rather than speculating, let's just rule it all the way out. Let's put this water block back on. Just, this is just to bench test it so I don't have to like get a whole other cooler. All right, just put a single memory module in the board. It should power up with one in there. So let's just put one in for testing and see what happens. Just put a couple screws in it. It doesn't need all the screws. I'll just put one in each corner. The center peg will hold it up. But we, I gotta know. I gotta know if the CPU is dead and this is the only way for us to really test it out. And we'll plug the water cooling back in. Yeah, how good is that guys? Look at that for convenience. Now the CPU is water cooled again. Might have just have to use some cable extensions for this to work. Just, just a test, just a test. One cable extension, two cable. I'm just, I'm actually purposely just using the most random ones I can find. <laughs> the last one in, and then we need to plug in the pump. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Let's plug the power in. To rule out the power supply. Power supply seems fine, and there we go. So I didn't plug any of the fans in, I just wanted to plug it in to know what, what was going on. Let's quickly throw in a, let's like a 1050 Ti or something. All right, GPU it up, this is like a 1660. GPU in, uh, power it up, and I've got my one of my little camera monitors, right, which is HDMI. I'm just gonna plug in. This is actually what I use a lot of the time to diagnose stuff. Little camera monitor, my little Atomos Shinobi. This might die, like the battery's quite low on this, but let's see if we get this system to post now. So we can rule out the CPU. Nothing yet. Could be because I'm using this PCIe slot as well. And it might not like it. But it should post regardless of whatever slot it's in. It's doing something, probably memory training. Are we gonna get it to post? Look at that. Yep. And the system is now posted. So the CPU's detected, the RAM, everything it's working. As you can see, when we look closely, the system's posted. This is a pretty classic MSI error message saying that the CPU's changed or whatnot. So this is fine if I had a keyboard plugged in and pressed F2 to run default values or F1 to run setup, it would actually go through and post no problem. So yeah, that rules out the power supply and the CPU. So now we definitively know that we have a faulty motherboard. So off to repair that one goes. And it's actually good that the CPU and the power supply are in working order. The fact that it's not the CPU or the power supply to me, ladies and gents, and my best old friends in the world is a great relief because now I don't have to worry about the CPU being dead. It's not the CPU. That motherboard just decided it was time that it didn't want to live anymore. And that's that sometimes happens with tech. And the reality is it usually happens at the most unfortunate times. And I was actually preparing for the custom water cool build by swapping the GPU around. And the second that it had the new GPU in, it killed the motherboard. Funniest bit about all that is the GPU, the Founders 3090 that killed the board, I suspect, I don't know. I don't actually don't know what happened. Uh, it's in my uh, temporary editing PC now, and it's fine. It's working no problems. I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. So it's not the GPU either. It was just that board's time to not want to live anymore. <laughs> I suspect that's all it was. And I, I'm actually pretty relieved that the CPU is working. This MSI board can come back out and go back on the shelf because this board, from my experience, is quite simply 
Well, this one at least. Well, this particular one is very unstable. So yeah, back in the box, this one goes. CPU can go back in its box until the motherboard comes back. Well, I've got to send it away now. And that is a good outcome out of a pretty unfortunate situation. All right, I think this is gonna just about do it for this video. I'm sorry that part four of this series didn't actually turn out to be the final reveal. I wasn't gonna make this, I was just gonna get all the new parts and whatever, but I figured that we'd sit down together and diagnose what was wrong with it. I'm glad that it's just the motherboard and not the CPU and the power supply, although this power supply was recalled. Uh, I'm still going to get them to send out a new one to swap it out, which should be pretty straightforward. I'll just send them the power supply itself, all the cables and everything will be fine. I'll just swap it out. We'll be good to go. And yeah, part four, unexpected twist, right? Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music It's available on Patreon. If you want to get early access to videos like this one, we're on float plane as well. Although... But that being said, I'm not sure how much music's going to be in this video because I'm not even thinking about editing this right now. Anyways, guys, once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And if you've got any questions about this build, we have three other videos putting it all together with the modding and all the quick disconnect stuff. So I have covered all of this in the past. I'll put links to all of that stuff down below in the description and I'll sprinkle cards up in the top right hand corner throughout the video so you can check that out too. Thanks for watching. It's bonus bindi time. Don't rub your face in it. <laughs> hey Bindi. What are you doing? Mm, tell me a story. Yeah, what else? Bindi? Tell me a story. Yeah, and then what did you do on the weekend? What are you getting up to this weekend? Hmm? Really? That sounds like a lot of fun, Bindi. Yeah? Say hi to all the gear seekers, Bindi.